and welcome to my channel. So in this video we, we are going to discuss two concepts. One is side input, the next one is composite P transforms. Okay. So we will directly go to the uh, demo slide and we will try to discuss each of this concept. In the first case we will see side inputs. So it's it's simple. So for any pipeline, right, Apache Beam pipeline, the main input is the P collection, right. So we are going to perform certain transformation on top of a P collection. It can be a Pardo or it can be a flat map, it can be a map or it can be any other core P transform available. So if you have to write your user defined logic or your logic, your own logic, then usually we'll use Pardo for that, right. So for example, if there is a requirement, you will have to also take some additional input while performing any of this P transformation, right? So those are runtime inputs, right? You can just think like those are runtime inputs, right? It's for easy understanding. So then you will perform that P transform. So then you that particular P transform will emit one more P collection, right? So usually these are runtime inputs, okay? So We'll see that example in detail. Okay, so this is called sad inputs. So say additional input. Okay, so the next thing is composite P transform. Okay, so for example, let's say if you have to perform group of P transformations. Okay, so then later point of time in the same pipeline, if you have to reuse or if you have to perform similar kind of group of P transformation on top of a P collection. What you will do in normal case, you will have to write it again, right? So to avoid that, so you can group a related P transformation or you can nest related P transformation into single P transform. We call it as a composite P transformation, okay? So with the P composite P transformation, you can modernize your code. The readability of the code will be uh, improvised. So there are many advantages with composite P transformation, okay. The reusability will be increased, okay. So usually it will take a P collection as an input, you will perform related or group of P transformation, you will nest it into a single P transformation and then this will emit one more P collection, we call it as a composite P transformation. Now we will see them in example, let us quickly go to the demo. So I've been using the same Apache Beam notebook, right? In the first case, we'll see side inputs. So here, so this is my P collection. So I'm trying to create a P collection by reading in memory data. This is a, this is, there is some text information available related to machine learning. So I'll create the P collection by reading this data. Then in the first case, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to use flat map and I'll try to split this each line which is available in the P collection into words, okay. So while doing that, I would like to pass our side inputs. There are two additional inputs it is taking this particular flat map P transformation. So based on those two additional inputs, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to filter words actually, right. So based on the length of the words, for example, let's say I'm here, I'm passing two and 10. If my length of the word is greater than two, and also my length of the word is less than or equal to 10, then only I would like to emit that word along with the length of the word, right? That is what I'm trying to do over here. So now in such case, flat map is my main P transform. This two and 10 are the additional input or side inputs to this P transformation, right? In the next case, we are also using Pardo right here what we are trying to do again we are extending this functionality now we have the words based on the length so the words have been restricted using length now we have the words with our the length greater than 2 and length greater than less than or equal to 10 then again i would like to select only these words from the group of the words coming from this particular transformation right i want only these words machine algorithms and method right so this particular this is a one input or additional input or side input i would like to pass it to my pardo over here right so anyway it will use this base class it will extend this base class 
and we will try to overwrite our process method inside Pardo. Then along with the element, this is the additional input or side input I am reading. So, so this is a list, it is a list of this words. Now if my element is, is equal to one of this word, then only it will, it should emit the element or word along with the one value, right. So it is one basically, it is a tuple. So why, why I am trying to do is, right, so I would like to count these words. For example, if these are available, uh, if these are repeated within this text. So I would like to count how many times it has been repeated. So whenever I am able to read or getting this word with the name machine, then I would like to assign a value 1 to it, right. If it is available multiple times, then later I would like to perform an aggregate function like combiners count per key. So that will be able to derive count of each word. That is what I am trying to do. Now this will limit only these words with the value 1. It is a tuple. Once I, have a, once I have the P collection, then I am performing count per key. So that I will get a count of these three words. Now let me run this code so that we can see that output. Okay. Now you can see machine is repeated twice, methods repeated twice, again algorithms repeated twice. So this is how you can you can use side inputs, right, to perform your P transformation on top of P collections. These are runtime parameters, right. So I hope you are clear about this concept, right. So next we will see composite P transformation, right. Here to implement composite P transformation or to create P composite P transformation, you will have to use this base class beam P transform. Then you will extend this base class, uh, right? Then you will overwrite this method expand, right? So it is like powder only. There you will try to overwrite process method. Here you will try to overwrite expand method, okay? And class names are different, abstractions are different. Here what I am trying to do, again the same thing, so I have created a P collection by reading in memory data, again this is the same text, right. So what I will do, so I will group multiple P transformation inside one single P transformation, we are calling it as a composite P transformation. In the first step I will try to split this each line, okay, based on space and then I will try to remove unwanted characters like dot comma or this open close parenthesis, this unwanted word ML, so with a regular expression matches. So I have already discussed regarding this regular expression P transformation, related P transformation in my previous video, okay, just go through that if you need more details about this particular P transformation. So this will again, it will split the words, it will remove this unwanted characters like dot, comma and then also these parenthesis, then it will try to emit clean words, okay. In the next transformation, I would like to filter the words based on the length. I want all the words which are greater than equal to 5 in length, okay. Once I have those words, then again, so what I will do, I will try to emit that words with the value 1, it is a tuple, right. So that in later point of time, I would like to perform aggregation to count those words, okay. So once I once I create this P transformation, I can use this P transformation like a core beam P transformation like this. You can see here this is my composite P transformation. This is performing all this P transformation, nested P transformation. Then this will emit my P collection like word name and the value. Then once I have this again, I am performing a aggregation like combiner count per key, right. So you can also see how it look like, let me print this composite P transform, how it look like. You can see each word with the length greater than 5 with the value associated, right. And then this particular aggregated P transform will count each word based on the key, right. Let me print this value. Okay, now run, you should get the 
word count okay you can see machine has been repeated two times learning three times something like that so this is how you can use composite p transforms inside a pipeline for example let's say in later point of time within the same pipeline if you have the similar kind of requirement like this right so if you don't use this composite p transform you will again you will have to write all this p transformation one by one right so it's a it's a code redundancy so in order to improvise the code readability and maintain the modularity of the code or reusability of the code so these composite p transformation comes very handy these are very much useful in such cases right i hope you got or you understood this concept okay thank you thank you for watching we'll meet in the next video thank you